Guys, unfortunately, are still often taught to hide emotional pain from when they are hurt by something. We're taught to hide it, to block it out, to pretend that it isn't there. It still affects us, but we try to pretend that it doesn't. This includes things like, oh, words don't hurt me. Uh, Yeah, they do, but you're pretending that it doesn't. And if you've been taught to to just block all that out, you can actually create a, a situation for yourself where you're not even able to process those emotions. You don't even know what they are because you've never processed them enough to know how they actually affect you. And this is unfortunately still taught to a lot of guys. Um, So, you know, you can bottle it up. uh, You can... uh, It'll show in the things that you do, the way that you do certain things, your emotions will show there. When having a debate about something, oftentimes one's emotions about a subject will make the person uh, turn their own argument into something binary to make them become extreme on their positions and it makes the uh, the logic and reason part of someone uh, inaccessible and this is including when people are wordsmiths the wordsmiths just take a lot longer for you to figure out oh this is what's happened it will definitely show in the way they argue something. It'll be, well, suddenly the person, you know, you're in an argu- you're in a debate, you're in an argument, you're in a discussion, and suddenly the person is mad at you, but they don't want to tell you that they're mad at you. So they change the way they word any of their arguments to be digs at you, ways of trying to degrade you, all because they didn't want to admit that you made them mad, that you hurt them. It messes up discussions. If they were able to just say to you, hey, you made me mad, or you hurt me, they can say it, and then you can move on with the discussion without any of this emotional baggage left over from something that just occurred. Another thing that occurs is sometimes someone will think to themselves, well, if I hide my emotions, then I can pretend to be neutral. And that's kind of messed up too, because at that point they can become very manipulative. In fact, that's why I prefer someone to leave a more petty kind of insult, because it just shows this person is mad, they're getting it out, now we can move on with the conversation. But if the person doesn't do that, then most of the conversation will be them trying to find a way to degrade you. That's how that works. If you were to this is going to sound weird. If you were to be a ghost floating around an office and hung around there the whole day, or let's say you were, you, it's an office that has cameras everywhere, cameras and microphones everywhere. You can't say or do anything without being seen, except maybe in the bathroom. And then even that would be questionable, right? And uh, you went and followed around people with the cameras all day to see you know, the, when, they're, when they have a discussion or the, just the way they interact with each other, you could see when one employee, something has happened, they've gotten a little bit mad, and then they'll pass that being angry to someone else. Well, now the person who was mad isn't as mad, and now someone else has that, and they have to let go of it. So it's like you could essentially watch an emotion being carried around the office like, oh, it's, I have the ball now, you know. But if that same employee went, took just a moment of time to say, hey, can I talk to you about something? Um, I just experienced this. This made me feel like this. Then that other employee can go, oh, um, I just experienced something like that a couple hours ago, and it made me feel like this oh, and now the whole thing gets diffused and that doesn't start bouncing around the whole office, right? Um, 
Now, in addition to also when when someone does throw, let's say, some sort of anger, frustration, uh, emotion via the way they treat someone and not, you know, talking to them about their emotions. If the other person was already feeling a little bit of that already, well, now it's going to add to that, and they're go- the the amount of of that emotion they're going to release in ways that's not going to stop, uh, you know, at that person is stronger. So, I mean, it's... So, if we are more in touch with our emotions and we're more emotionally honest, it's going to make us, I mean, besides making us more intellectually honest because we we have... uh, we have made ourselves a little bit vulnerable when we are able to display that we're frustrated with something or we're hurt by something or, you know, a number of different feelings. You know, if we're able to do that, that workplace is a, a more pleasant place. If we're able to do that in general, our lives are more enjoyable and we can be more enjoyable to the people that are around us. And we're not going to carry on frustrations and pain and anger and sadness to the next place that we go. Because we've already found some way of expressing it. You know, these emotions aren't just going to just disappear. You think, if you think you make them disappear, you're lying to yourself. Now, what can happen if someone gets to a point where they've practiced for so long uh, hiding their emotions, bottling them up, um, eventually they may not feel any emotions when something frustrating or mean or whatever is said to them. But they'll generally be people that are unpleasant to be around. They will have a mean-spiritedness about them all the time. It's like, yay, you, you achieved that you can, uh, you can block your emotions, and now you're an asshole. You know, that's just kind of how that, that pans out. And I personally think that this sort of blocking of our emotions and not experiencing the wide array of emotional experiences that we can celebrate in life um, does such a disservice to men that I think it is one of the main contributing factors to why men commit suicide more than women. And you can try to argue, well, you know, guys uh, uh, take care of their emotions differently. Yeah, and I can see that works out for you so well by those suicide, suicide statistics. Suicide is usually from an emotional issue. Someone is feeling a certain way about themselves, about the, the, the way they relate to the rest of the world, all that sort of thing. It's usually an emotional issue. So it's not really any sort of stretch to assume that those kinds of emotions and the blocking of those emotions and what affects blocking of those emotions has on men. And that it contributes to the suicide rates. 